Hello, everyone. This is Cracking System Design Interview, Episode 2, Design a Web Crawler. So for this um, presentation, I search a lot um, information on the internet. For example, um, I reference a lot of um, stuff in Wikipedia. And um, personally, I don't have designed a web crawler. So there must be something maybe wrong in my presentation. If you find it, you can point it out and uh, leave some comments. Okay, now let's start it. Okay, so a web crawler, sometimes we can call it a spider or spider boat, and they're often um, called a crawler. It's an internet boat that systematically browses the uh, World Wide Web, typically for the purpose of web indexing. We know like for some web search engines like Google and some other websites, they use web crawling or spidering software to update their web content or indexes of other sites' web content. So for example, this is a spider. It can um, crawl the web page. And there's some instance that analyze page content and store in the index. For users, for example, I can type some query and so backend server will receive my query and fetch data from the index. And after fetching some maybe 10 URLs, it will rank those URLs and return me the final results. Okay, for a web crawler, it starts with a list of URLs to visit. Uh, we call it the seeds or the seed URLs. So as a uh, crawler can visit these URLs, it identifies all the hyperlinks in the pages and adds them to the list of URLs to visit we call it the frontier. So URL frontier is usually implemented with uh, message queues like uh, RabbitMQ and a centralized database is used for URL deduplication. And the URLs from the frontier are recursively visited according to a set of policies. If the crawler is performing like archiving of websites, it copies and saves the information as it goes. The archives are usually stored in such a way that they can be viewed, read and navigated as if they were on the live web, but are preserved as snapshots. Okay, so it's a basic architecture. So we start with some seed URLs. At first, we build the URL queues, so we will read those seed URLs. Those seed URLs sometimes maybe just 10, sometimes maybe big, maybe 1 million, or possible. And for one instance, like each time I remove one URL from the queue, and we will send HTTP requests and to like fetch the content of this URL. After fetching the content, we can analyze the content and store the content in our database, for example, for index purpose. And from this content, we can extract some hyperlinks and we can add those new hyperlinks to the message queue here. Okay, this is also from uh, Wikipedia. So for crawler, we have four policies, a selection policy, a revisit policy, a platinum policy, and a parallelization policy. Okay, let's start with selection policy. We know the current size of the web page is very large. There are like hundreds of millions of millions of like web pages, web URLs. Even for large search engines, you can only cover a portion of the publicly available um, content. So we need a way to like uh, rank our URLs. Like we want to fetch important URLs for, first. Some researchers they have like they uh, cross like three hundred and twenty-eight million pages, and they are using BFS ordering. They found that a like breast force crawler ca captures pages with high ranks early in the crawler. Yeah, um, this is pretty natural, I think. For example, we want to crawl all the data in Yelp. Like we start with several uh, seed URLs. It's very natural that the hyperlinks in the Yelp page also like link to other pages in Yelp, right? So it's pretty natural to use BFS for a uh, like crawling algorithm. Okay, the so second policy is revisit policy. So the web, uh, the World Wide Web, 
does not only serve static content, it always serves dynamic content. Like for example, for news, like for the homepage of BBC, uh, it changes almost every day, right? So some content changes very frequently. So we need to have a policy to reverse it, reverse it those uh, visited URLs. So one is uniform policy. This involves revisiting all pages in the collection with the same frequency, regardless of the rate of change. Another one is proportion, uh, proportional policy. This involves revisiting more often the pages that change more frequently. So the visiting frequency is directly proportional to the change frequency. Okay, so it may involve some machine learning algorithm here. Okay, so the third one is the platinum policy. So crawlers can like trip data much quickly and in greater de depth than human searches, right? So they can have a crippling impact on the performance of a site. If a single crawler is performing multiple requests per second and downloading large files, a server can have a hard time keeping up with requests from multiple crawlers, right? So we need to be polite. We cannot be a bad, terrible crawler that's uh, are crashing other websites. Otherwise, we may be blocked by those websites so that we cannot crawl their websites anymore. You know, the use of web crawlers is useful for a number of tasks, but comes with a price for the general community. The costs of using web crawlers include uh, that we will consume the network resources, like we may overload other servers, like other application servers, for example, YEP server, uh, BBC server. And uh, there's a pro big problem with poorly written crawlers, which can crash servers or routers, or which download page they cannot handle. And uh, sometimes a, like a personal crawlers can be bad. If it's deployed by too many users, they can disrupt networks and web servers. Okay, so a partial solution to those problems is uh, like robots exclusion protocol, also known as a robots.txt protocol. It's a standard for administrators like to indicate which parts of the cell web servers should be, not be accessed by crawlers. But this standard does not include a suggestion for the in, like interval of visits to the same server, even though this uh, interval is the most effective way of avoiding server overload. Uh, recently, commercial search engines like Google, um, they are able to use an extra crawler delay parameter in the robots.txt file to indicate the number of seconds to delay between requests. Okay, so last one is parallelization policy. It just tells us like we should uh, coordinate like all our in instance uh, pretty well. We shall not allow to, we shall not, uh, uh, we should not ask two crawler instance like to fetch the same URL, right? So uh, this is our basic architecture. Let's just merge build URL queue and remove URL from queue. Okay, next we update it like this. At first we have parser, just pass the page. Then after passing the page, we got some content we have a dot fingerprint. We have some hash algorithm for some MD5. We can hash the content to a hash value. And uh, if we have al already seen this content, we don't need to process uh, proceed further. We just stop. Otherwise, if it's a new content, we just add the hash value to the this dot fingerprint database and add the content to my DB, maybe for index purpose. And next, we are in URL filter. We have a robot template templates that may tell us, uh, for example, which suffix I want to visit, which suffix I don't want to uh, visit. For example, a URL may be like some URL may be anyways dot uh, HTML, some URL may be anyways dot JS, some may be anyways dot uh, like MP3, MP4, or dot JPG. For example, this template can tell us uh, we only want to visit like .txt, .html, .htm. So we can filter some other URLs we don't want to visit. Okay, at last we will uh, 
remove duplicate URL since we only want to URL. Uh, we don't want to visit a URL that we have already visited. Okay, after this step, we can add the new hyperlinks to our message queue. And for message queue, uh, we can use something like RabbitMQ because RabbitMQ provides message acknowledgement so that we can make sure that every URL can be successfully processed. We will not miss any URL due to exceptions. Okay, at last, uh, for reverse policy, I'm thinking that we can add an offline job. We can get all the URLs from this URL set and add them to the message queue. Like for the URL in the URL set, we can have a timestamp which tell us the last time we visit this URL. So if it's a pretty old URL, then we can add them back to the queue. Okay, now let's um, take some time to discuss the URL du duplication. First of all, we can store the URL in database for the duplication for a new URL. We just check if it's in our database. If it's not in our URL, if it's not in our database, then it's a new URL. Then we can add it to the database and add it to our message queue. It's easy, but performance is not good. But personally, I think here the performance here is not a big issue since the bottleneck of a web crawler is in the fetch page. It's a HTTP request to a third party. So the latency of this step can be like maybe several seconds. But for URL deduplication, if we are using a database, we read data from disk, it's fine. Even the latency is maybe several hundred milliseconds. But compared to the latency of the HTTP request here, I think it's fine personally. But for, uh, like for a large web crawler, like we may visit a lot of URLs and we may need database. For smaller crawlers, we can maybe improvement, like improve it by using some memory. For example, we can store URL in set. Maybe a set in Python or a set in C++. It needs a lot of memory. And assuming each URL is 50 bytes, we have 100 million URLs, then we need five gigabytes. It may be enough for small color. Okay, let's improve, and, uh, improve it. We can hash URL, then we can store them in set. After cache, a URL becomes a 128-bit string, which is 16 bytes. Previously, it's 50, now it's 16, so we improve about 3.6. Okay, also we can use spare map. Previously, we know we map it to a 128 bit, but now we only use one bit. But also, since it's a hash, so it's also a chance of hash collision. Okay, at last we can use improved spare map called Bloom filters. Like we can hash URL like k times using k different hash functions. For example, so first URL is X, we use three hash functions and we hash to three different values. Then we flip this value from zero to one. For Y, we also map it to three values. We set those values to one. For Z, we do the same thing. Now for a new URL W, we use the hash function to hash it to, a three, to three different values. If all those positions value are one, we think W is, is already in it it has already been visited. As long as there's some value is zero, we think it's a new URL. Then we just set all those values to one. Uh, so, like the good advantage of using Bloom filter is uh, we reduce the uh, collision rate if the data is not very large. But the downside is when we're adding a lot more data, we know that there are more and more ones, collision rate will become higher. And also for Bloom filter, we cannot erase bits here. Since for one, there may be multiple URLs mapped to the same value. So we cannot erase bits very easily here. Okay. But um, as mentioned, for large crawling systems, maybe a data using database can be fine. 
since the bottleneck is in uh, maybe just in the fetch page here. Okay, for anti anti spider, we know that uh, for our human searches, like uh, we are using browser, so we will set the header in the request. There is a user agent field in the header, for example, just like this. So if you, we are using um, web crawlers in our program, we need to manually set the user he header, the user agent. Otherwise, our request may be rejected. So uh, we can predefine like 30 or 50 different user agents. Then each time we send a request, we can just randomly pick one of the uh, 50 predefined user agents. And another one is uh, we can use IP pro proxy so that um, it, uh, it reduces the chance that we are blocked. Okay, that's basically it. Thanks so much.